Coming up on Inside BC Football, it's a new season, there's a new attitude, and a whole bunch of new players ready to compete. We'll take a look at quarterback Emmett Moorhead and find out how the offense plans to meet expectations this year. Plus, we'll meet two Eagles making a difference on the BC campus. The vibe of the team is as good as it's been since I've been here. The guys are getting older and they're holding each other accountable where I don't have to do it anymore. And when you have a team that is policing its own, it's different. And that means the culture is really strong. The attitude and effort is contagious. And there's a lot more guys. There's a lot more guys healthy. There's more energy. There's more competition, there's more fight. There we go, baby! It's a different group. Oh, baby! We got a new energy, it's a new feel, different leaders. You know, those guys are the glue of our team and it's just gotta be like infectious and everyone's gotta feed off of what we wanna be. There's not gonna be anything that helps us from dwelling on the past. This team is different than last year's team. Right? We got new players, we got new coaches. We wanna develop our own identity. And so I think that culture that we, we kind of built this off season has really paid off. You guys understand, look, all the We're a lot closer as a team, um, and that's been something that we've been, you know, harping on all offseason, you know, just getting closer to the team so that we can trust everybody, and, you know, we could trust our guys. I could trust that the person next to me is doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing, and he could trust that I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. You hear it from everyone around the Boston College football program, the 2023 Eagles are a whole new team. There are still some key returning players, but this year the Eagles have added 10 new faces via the transfer portal, providing depth at every position. Every school basically now is using it in one way or another. You know, Coach Halfie did a great job of bringing guys in that fit Boston College that were great football players, but also great student athletes. Our staff did a tremendous job, you know, finding out what makes these guys tick. It adds depth and it adds competition. So, you know, what does competition do? It makes guys, you know, produce more. I think the guys that we brought in, we replaced spots that needed to be filled and we developed the guys that needed to be developed. I think across the board, everyone just had huge improvements this offseason. It's gonna be fun football. What we didn't have last year, we're gonna have this year. It's just gonna be a refreshing feeling uh, to get back out there with and see what we can do. We have depth. There's competition for jobs, especially on the offensive line. There's guys who started last year that might be twos. There's guys that started last year that might end up as threes. When you have that depth and you can practice and compete, it's a whole different football team. Up next on Inside BC Football, we take a look at the offense and the quarterback aiming to put up some big numbers. The success was in the 18 months of planning and preparation. The jumping was the easy part. But for your profession, you can put all the planning and preparation in. If you fail to work your asses off when you step on that, 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 that battlefield, because I use that, it is your battlefield. If you fail to work together, if you stay, fail to give it all, then the outcomes won't end up in failure. So it's a combination of both. Preparation, going through hardship together, and when the time comes, stepping up, united, and giving it your all. Garlo, trucking up the middle, and into the end zone. It's no secret what the challenges were for the BC Eagles last season. Key injuries to the offensive line had a big impact on the ability to put up points. This year, they already have one big reason to be optimistic on the offense. All everything lineman Christian Mahogany has returned after a season ending knee injury in 2022. I had a tough, long process, but it went well, you know, recovered really well. My doctor did a great job and I'm just glad to be back out there. Christian's one of the best guards in the ACC, maybe in the entire country. Being a quarterback back in the day, I can just tell you, when you're that quarterback and you have big hog right there and right guard, you just get that sense of comfortability like, okay, things can work out here. Also strengthening the offensive line, a couple of transfers. You bring in Kyle Hergel, who's been all-conference Sunbelt player, who's very similar to Christian. He's got a nastiness and he's got a toughness to him. We brought in Logan Taylor, who was my high school left tackle at Episcopal. That was one of my closest friends there and someone that I really trust. And it worked out perfectly. I think he's 
really fit in with the guys well. Add in more returning players now with another year of experience. Drew Kendall played hurt last year, torn meniscus, broken left hand, was a freshman All-American. Ozzie Trapillo, six foot eight, and I think in a year he might be one of the top tackles in the draft. Then you have Jack Conley, you have Kevin Klein, you have Jude Bowery, it's just a different feel. Which is great news for the Eagle running backs. Pat Garwell is a thousand yard rusher here. You know, not many people can say that. I think people kind of sleep on Pat. He can catch the ball to the backfield, he's strong. So I'm excited to see what he can do. And then Alex Broom. Alex Broom against Louisville kind of had a coming out party as a true freshman. Broom is electric, you know, we still got Kai Robichaud, Cam Barfield, we got guys that people haven't heard of and they're just gonna make plays in the run game. Of course, missing from this year's offense will be BC's all-time leading receiver and NFL first round draft pick, Zay Flowers. And I've said it, I'll miss Zay for the rest of my life, not just in the way he played football, but who he was on and off the field. Yeah, I don't think there's any replacing Zay. We have guys like Ryan O'Keefe that, I mean, in a straight line, he's faster than Zay. We brought in Ryan O'Keefe from Central Florida. We entered the portal, we went after him. He can fly. Then you have Jaden Williams, who missed six games last year. Jaden's been starting since a freshman, and he looks better. The biggest underdog right now is Lewis Bond. He is a technician. His routes are super detailed. He knows his assignments. He is super talented. You have Dino Tomlin, who really jumped out and played towards the end of last year. Dino is the fire for the whole offense. He brings the juice every day. It's fun to watch. He is literally having fun every time he lines up. And then what you saw what Joe Griffin could do. Joe Griffin against Duke went up and caught those jump balls. He had the game winner against NC State. So while we don't have one guy like Zay who's going to get, you know, 12 touches a game, I think we've got a good group and they're very well coached. But no success can happen without the man running the offense. And after taking over as quarterback in the final four games last season, Emmett Moorhead is more than ready to take more snaps. The kid is electric. He slings the ball very well. He's getting a bigger command of the huddle. You know, he's just taking that leadership role. Playing in those last four games, if you look what he did, he had not played football since his junior year in high school, right? So he comes out against Duke and he threw for over 300 yards and multiple touchdowns and almost led us back against a nine-win team without many pieces in front of him. Then the next week he goes and we beat NC State after going down 14-0. I think that experience is invaluable. And he won the job at the end of the year. I think the quarterback position is tough because you're always one hit away from being the number one guy as a backup. So I felt like last year I'd, in my mind, kind of been in that role. Just knowing, and especially with where our O-line was last year, it could have been any game at any moment in that season. So it's not too different. I feel like my approach is, is definitely more serious. I think I'm even more locked in than I was before, but I'm just excited, it's more opportunity. At six foot six, Moorhead likes to model his game after a couple current NFL quarterbacks. I really love to watch and study Josh Allen and specifically Justin Herbert. They're super athletic guys and I'm working on that. I spent a lot of time this off season trying to get stronger in my lower body and make my running capabilities more of a threat. And what does Emmett like to do in his spare time? Well, he is from the West Coast. I love to surf. In California, a lot of my friends and I uh, spent a lot of time in the water, and I feel like that's a great outlet from football. I think football is so intense, you need to have things that when you're on vacation or break, you need to be able to get away with, and that's a big thing for me. Coming up on Inside BC Football, we will look at the Eagles' defense and all ACC lineman Donovan Izaraku. When your company is a partner of Boston College Sports Properties, you're given a unique game day experience, including pre-game hospitality, access to our luxury suite, parking passes, sideline access during the games, opportunities to ride on the team plane to away games, and much more. Join us as we travel with the football team to places like Army, Pitt, and Georgia Tech. Or come to a home game and enjoy our hospitality tent, which includes a catered buffet, beverages, and the opportunity to network with other partners. Boston College Football has a fantastic home schedule, going up against teams like Holy Cross, Florida State, Virginia Tech, the University of Virginia, and more. Don't miss out on this opportunity to create lasting memories with your company and family. If you're interested in learning more about working with Boston College Sports Properties, contact Mike Wynn at 781-552-9051 or email michael.win at bostoncollegesportsproperties.com. Go Eagles! 
Shipley stayed in the block. They gave DJ a lot of time. Now he's out of time and down back at the 22. Well, that De Palma took him down. On the defensive side of the ball, the Eagles will have a good mix of veteran leaders along with some fresh new faces and a coaching staff that has remained intact. So, straight back. Be ready to get out there, CJ. Uh, first and foremost, we want to limit the explosives in games. We want to be more turnover driven. I think we need to get a lot better. All right, we're just forcing turnovers and creating turnovers on defense. And uh, thirdly, we want to impose our will on our opposition. Strong leadership will come from the linebacker position as Vinny De Palma begins his sixth year. It's hard to replicate experience. It's hard to replicate game speed. It's hard to replicate, you know, little tells from the you know offensive line or the running backs, whatever it may be. So I think that's where experience comes into play. You feel more comfortable. You know what your responsibility is. And you can kind of just go let it rip. Uh, having Vinny back is, is, is monumental for the entire defense. Uh, he's a coach on the field. Uh, beyond that, uh, he's a leader. He's an extension of, this, of the defensive staff, and he understands, man, the, the culture of Boston College. Hey, hey, you got Vinny. Hey, here's the truth right now. Second quarter. Here's the truth right now. He's the guy that I would hire tomorrow if he didn't want to play football anymore. His toughness, um, his attitude, his football IQ, his instincts, his awareness, uh, I am so glad that he came back, and it's going to be so much fun to watch him. He looks faster. He looks leaner. And along with Cam Arnold, provides a one-two punch in the middle of the defense. <clears throat> they're both extremely intelligent players. You know, they're great students off the field, and they're great students of the game on the field. Obviously, they do have some uh, different factors athletically where they can complement each other. He came in as a, as a, I think he put cornerback in high school. He came in as a safety. I remember looking at him like, this guy's like a big dude. Like, he's jacked up. Um, and I'm like, that guy's going to be a linebacker one day. So, you know, he played safety his freshman year. Then, he, you know, he moved to linebacker. And he's been awesome. You know, those guys got to be the ones that are flying, you know, sideline to sideline, you know, giving the same calls. But it's, it's good because they're veterans, so they've been there before. Similar to the offensive line, the Eagles secondary was hit hard by injuries last season. All of a sudden, Cole Batson's our starting free safety as a freshman. He had a great last half of the season. Elijah Jones, I think, could be one of the better corners in the ACC. Amari Jackson's a name that we started Amari against Clemson as a true freshman. That's how good we felt about Amari. And he had a really good game, and then he got hurt. Jalen Cheek, we were going to start against Florida State, but then Jalen had an illness that kept him out for the entire season post-Florida State game. So Cheek is back. Add to that more instant help from the transfer portal. Karee Johnson, Victor Nelson, uh, Alex Washington, and what that does, that is more competition. Alex Washington from Harvard came in the spring. Gives us length, toughness, and size, a corner, really smart guy. Victor Nelson, we brought him in from LIU. He like nine interceptions last year. He keeps finding the football. Oh, he's got to kind of get a grip on the scheme and learn how we play. He's another very talented player. So while we lost some older guys, the key to this whole thing is we have not lost young players in the portal. That's going to be the key for us. We need to recruit. We need to develop. We need to keep our young players from getting poached. And after a 3-9 and nine season, we were still able to do that. Donovan Izaraku was one of those young players that many schools were eyeing in the transfer portal. Donovan, true sophomore last year, uh, led the league in sacks as a true sophomore. After the season, a ton of teams tried to take him. Dono wanted to stay. He wanted to be here with his teammates. He wanted to get developed by Coach Vince. Oh, 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 oh. He wants to be at BC. He has the ability to be the conference's best pass rusher. Now he's 254 pounds. He's played in a season and just the attitude. He's one of the greatest kids on and off the field, but when he gets on the field, he's got a switch now that sometimes he's hard to hold back, um, which is what makes him special. And everybody in the locker room has so much respect for him because they know how hard he's gonna go, they know how important this is to him, they know how important this place is to him. Last year, after evaluating a lot of the tape, I noticed that you know I kind of lacked in my lower body power, or just power in general, You know, just working on my strength. So that was very big for me this off season, uh, just getting stronger. <laughs> Uh, obviously, he's a high-energy guy. Uh, you know, Coach V does such a great job with all of the defensive linemen. Uh, he's being coached up by one of the best out there, and, uh, and he's executing his assignments. Uh, I think he does an excellent job. And Donovan will be joined up front by a tough, experienced group. Get a guy like Cam Horsley, who's played so much football, and Sheeta Salah's back. 
She uh, got injured in the first week and was out for the season. And now she is back. And Neto Akpala has really jumped out in camp. He's a name that I'm really excited to see. They're relentless, they're fearless, they go, they're physical, they're nasty. I think everybody in this building is pretty, pretty confident in that group. So our young guys who are sophomores that are now juniors are now getting bigger and they're more developed and they know how to play football. And they also know how to take a break from football. Myself and a couple of the D linemen, we go uh, go bowling on Tuesdays every once in a while and go uh, have a little you know, friendly competition. When we come back, we'll meet two student athletes accomplishing goals away from the gridiron. Be sure to mark your calendar for September 16 as Boston College celebrates the memory of Wells Crowther with the Red Bandana Game. Starting at noon, the Eagles will host Florida State. Crowther, the former BC lacrosse player, gave his life on 9-11, but not before saving 18 people, many who vividly remember the first responder wearing a red bandana. The game is such an important and wonderful event Wells loved being here at Boston College. He loved being part of the athletic program on the lacrosse team, but he loved the football games and the spirit. And to have something so monumental be geared around the red bandana and Wells' story means the world to us. Proceeds from the game go to the Wells Remy Crowther Charitable Trust, which raises money for scholarships and organizations that support young people in pursuing their passions. Wells' legacy has endured here at Boston College because of the support that the university has given to his story. I think the inspiration that his legacy created in the students has grown and that the football team and uh, the football program has picked up on that. It's become a truly a life force here and we're thrilled. Living in service to others is part of the mission at Boston College and has been embraced by two student athletes on the football team. You have a responsibility to help others. I feel like as a, as a student athlete, you have that platform and that voice that other people don't really have. And you should use that to embrace others and bring people along with you on the journey of success. Well, my parents always raised me to be open-minded, and when it came to coming to BC, I knew I wanted to be more than just a student athlete. I knew I wanted to be part of the campus and part of the student body. This summer, Taji Johnson and Nick Thomas, along with Alex Broom, joined three other BC student athletes for four days in Washington, D.C. as part of the ACC Unity Tour. The tour is part of the ACC's commitment to supporting student athletes through meaningful educational opportunities and is a component of the league's social justice platform, ACC Unite. It was people of all races, all sports, everybody there just having a time with each other, getting to know what the experience is like at their schools, what it's like for them, how they manage through it, and what they feel is like a comfortable space for them on their campuses. The ACC Unity Tour was a great experience for me, being in different museums and different things like that, really relaying that history and kind of seeing that history could teach you things that you didn't really know before and it could also determine your decision that you make for the future. During the school year, Johnson and Thomas are also involved in social justice on campus as well. Eagles for Equality is the diversity, equity, and inclusion group for student athletes here at BC. We do things not only for the students at BC, but for the entire community of Boston as well. We did a unity walk around campus, which was eye-opening because we got to see so many people come out to support our group and just be there with each other. And we got to go to Fish Fieldhouse, actually, after that walk, and we sat down and had a rather tough talk about what it's like to be a student of color on campus, what it's like to be part of the LGBTQ community. Just those type of conversations it was a safe haven for us to be able to sit down and talk. We started the Black Male Initiative about two years ago, kind of giving the black males on campus a voice. The black males on campus are the minority, and it kind of puts things in different perspective for us. Well, having this group of young black men just be able to get together, just sit down, have a conversation, how our week's been. Also, outside of that, show support at each other's sporting events. And you just see them all in the crowd supporting one another. It's just like a really great feeling. Just raising our name and kind of showing people that I'm more than just an athlete. 
Growing up, my mother always told me that things are bigger than yourself, and you're always taught that looking at the bigger picture of things, and I think using my platform as a student athlete to kind of embrace that role uh, as being a leader on campus and using my voice so people that aren't really heard that much can actually be heard. So, it's time to get excited, Eagles fans. The 2023 football season is here, and the team promises that you won't be disappointed. You know, last season we faced a lot of trials and tribulations, but it was a good learning tool, a good learning curve. It's going to be a very fun year. All in all, like you have guys that believe in this place. You have guys that believe in each other, are confident in each other, confident in their coaching staff. And I can guarantee that it's really, really important to everybody in this building to win a lot of football games this year. It's a totally new season. We're going to put everything behind us and we're going to show you why you should come out there. And if you don't come out there, I think you should be out there. This is our year to do something great, and I'm looking forward to it, and the fans should definitely tune in and don't miss out. This is by far and without a doubt the best I've seen this team. Overall, we have depth at every position on the field, offense and defense. There's a lot to be excited about. Our team is trying to stay humble and, and quiet about it, but we're really, really ready to go. Stay locked in, keep coming to the games, keep supporting these kids, and we're going to give you some fun moments this year. Stay up to date on the 2023 season. Go to bceagles.com. We'll see you next time on Inside BC Football.